All right, hey guys, I'm Chris. I'm gonna talk to you about synthesizers, not work related at all. Okay, so my story starts off when I was a little kid, I was a geek, um, like, like much of you were, I'm sure. Uh, my thing was magic cards. I was really into magic cards and uh, <laughs> eventually that started getting old and I got into band, I was a band geek and I got thrown out of that because I wouldn't march. Uh, didn't want to show up early on Sundays to march around out in the field in the hot sun, screw that. So I started getting into music and kept on with that, eventually getting into DIY electronics. Uh, putting together synthesizers, little, little chips that do operation amps and stuff like that. It's great fun, and you burn yourself a lot with your uh, soldering iron. Uh, now, the backstory with synthesizers is back in the 60s, um, there's this guy named Bob Moog, and he uh, pretty much developed the synthesizer. He wasn't solely responsible for it. There were a bunch of other guys like Buchla and Arp, but he was pretty much the guy that decided he was going to use voltage control to uh, vary what the things were doing. And they built these huge cabinets full of complicated things with wires that you connect from here and there. And it was, you basically had to be an engineer to run it. And what Bob Moog did is he started listening to musicians on what they wanted from their synthesizers. And he condensed it down into its very core and put some keys on it and gave the musicians the mini Moog, which was just a small synthesizer that they could play on stage and that they didn't have to be an engineer in order to work it. Um, and the, the core things that he put into that was the oscillator, the filter, the envelope, and the amplifier. The oscillator is basically the source of all the sound. It's like the, the lump of clay, and it feeds that sound into the filter. The filter cuts away the parts that you don't want and then feeds that to the amplifier. And the amplifier is controlled by the envelope, which makes the sound louder or softer, depending on when you hit the keys. And that brings me to uh, composing versus programming. And with synthesizers, you hear a lot of people saying they're programming a synthesizer. And it's, it's very much like programming in that uh, you've got variables and you tell the machine what to do and how to do it when you want it to do it, instead of... Uh, getting the muscle memory down of like say playing the violin or saxophone, something like that. So it's, it's very akin to other geeky activities. And uh, next time you're sitting around looking for something that you want to do, you got some extra time, I would suggest that uh, perhaps you go get yourself a DIY synth kit. You can look them up on the internet and they're, you know, run 40, 50 bucks. And it's just a little board and they give you all the parts and you put it together and you solder it together, and it doesn't take much experience. You can just throw that together, hook that up to your computer, and you can start making bleeps and bloops and you know, have a good time with it. And you know, it's something to, to get your mind off of things. Uh, it doesn't take too much experience, and you know, it, it's a good way to waste time. And you might end up finding yourself programming synthesizers instead of uh, composing. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I went a little fast. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. <laughs>